Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Learn to Code with Anjali. So today we are going to start with the IP subject that is Informatics Practices for class 12 session 21-22. So first of all, a heartiest congratulations to all of you for clearing your class 11th and now you're all in class 12th and the classes are still going online because the pandemic is again on a rising edge but never mind we have got the best for you in online studies so for online computer science and ip you are at the right place so since you have come across this video you don't have to look anywhere else throughout the session for ip or cs right everything you will be getting here all notes all question banks sample papers practice questions everything project practical file zero to hundred everything related to the subject you will be getting here so subscribe my channel right now and before i start with today's lesson because it's the first lesson we will be starting with introduction to pandas that is the first topic in your book book you can follow any of the books which your school teacher recommends because i know most of you would be asking me in the comments after this video that ma'am which book should we follow so you can buy sumita arora you can buy preeti arora you can buy ncrt ncrt is rather free on the ncrt website so you can download for free from there and any of the books you follow but the most important thing is follow my notes follow my questions right now before i start with the lesson i would like to introduce you myself my name is anjali i have 16 years of experience in teaching ip and cs to cbsc i'm a plus educator on an academy the link of my an academy profile is given in the description you can also find me on an academy with my name that is anjali lutra so this is my profile you can go and uh, follow me over there i take live classes over there as well for ip and cs class 11th and 12th there are both kind of classes like the classes which you can see in the special classes category these are all free classes anyone can attend but the only thing is when you come to attend this class you would be asked a code so this is my name you have to enter this to attend any of the free live class on an academy just write my name unlock the free resources and you can make maximum advantage of that right so do join me in a live class over there and i have also given a telegram channel link in the description so join that uh, there i keep sharing the links of all my upcoming classes or upcoming live classes on an academy as well as on youtube right another thing this is my youtube channel which is in hindi right so learn to code with anjali is in english because i was getting heavy demand from many of you that ma'am we need to study it in english because there is no channel providing ip and cs in english and there are many of you in south india and the other parts of the country who have difficulty understanding hindi that's why i've started this course in english but if any of you wants to go for hindi version of this so i have all my hindi videos on this channel so huge content is available huge content is available for both ip cs btech bca students for programming and that is in hindi so you can subscribe my this channel as well so let's come back to our main topic that is ip class 12 so as you know your first thing the first chapter is data handling one now what do we mean by this now many of the students ask me that ma'am what is the difference between ip and cs of class 12th now when we talk about ip and cs of class 11th it is almost the same so the python which you study in class 11th is uh, 90 percent same in ip and cs the type of programs you do and everything but it is altogether different in class 12th although in 12th ip and 12th cs there are two topics that is dbms and sql and the second one is computer networks so these are the things which are common you have to do in ip also as well as you have to do in cs right so we would be doing in both of these but python is totally different in ip our focus is on managing the data that how you can store the data in the best possible way how you can perform operations on the data how can i fetch with different conditions with different kind of slicing indexing how can i modify so all that thing which is related to data comes under this then representing your data in the form of graphs and charts so that we can make a better decision by analyzing the data so this is more towards data analysis right so ip is more towards data analysis whereas cs python is more towards the basics of programming that how your basic of programming should be strong 
how do you use file handling how you use functions recursions data structures and all so python language is different so language is python but what you are studying what you are coding in 12th ip and cs would be different in terms of python but the other two topics would be similar right so it is uh, i hope very much clear to you that whatever we are going to do in ip that is of no use to cs students in python for the class 12th obviously after that if you are learning python you should learn everything in python right so now we are going to start with data handling 1 you would be remembering that when you were in class 11th you did a few data structures in python a few data structures in python included like uh, lists tuples tuples also few people call it then we have string dictionary so these are called data structure because data structure is a way to manage the data that how you store the data how you manage the data that is called data structures right so these are the inbuilt or primitive data structures which are there in python you don't have to do anything extra to use them you don't have to import any extra file you don't have to do anything extra to use this you can just write a is equal to 20 30 50 so this becomes a list if you write a is equal to round brackets 20 30 50 it becomes a tuple if you write a is equal to welcome so that becomes a string and if you write curly brackets and you write a stands for anjali so that becomes your dictionary so we can create these data structures i hope you all would be knowing how to create these data structures in case any of you have any problem in these feel free to tell me so if you tell me that ma'am we are not that comfortable with this thing i'll explain you so it's not that if you have missed something in 11 you will be facing difficulty to cope up the, with the things in class 12 it won't be like that so just let me know that ma'am i'm not able to get it I'll explain that in the next video right so from this what you need to know before you start your 12th class syllabus is that list is mutable so we must understand the meaning of the term mutable and immutable tuples and strings are immutable dictionary is also data mutable so we can modify the data of a dictionary we can modify the data of a list so mutable means modifiable so if you can modify the data at the same memory location we call it mutable and if you cannot modify the data your data once stored remains the same you cannot change it then we call it immutable for example if this is your list and you try to add five to your first value so first value i can access with the index zero so a zero is this a one is this a two is this i want that a zero should be increased by five i write like this this statement is perfect it will change this 20 to 25 it will work absolutely correct but if i try to do this thing with a tuple so if i try to do it with this one i will be getting an error I will be getting an error and that would be that assignment is not possible with this data type so you cannot assign in this data type because this data type is immutable we cannot modify the value of this particular data type right so you must be very much clear about these terms mutable and immutable now these data structures were already there so you didn't have to import anything now we will be using another data structures and those are defined outside in some other helping files so in python if you are using some helping file where some code is defined and you want to use it in your program you need to import it so you have to write import pandas as pd so basically you have to import pandas now as pd is optional so import is the keyword which says that we want to add an extra library to our program which library the name is pandas so you have to write it in small letters if you want you don't want to write the whole name again and again in the program you want a smaller version of that so we can use as pd pd is anything whatever name you want to give but pandas is pandas okay so as is a keyword and this is the alias name so like my name is Anjali and if at home nobody wants to call me like with the long name Anjali they just want to call me Anne so they will write like import Anjali as Anne okay so or Angel or whatever so we call it like this so basically giving another name as you all have nicknames at home or your friends give you a nickname similar way we are giving a nickname to a library and we can use it with that nickname throughout the code right which is called 
Elias. So Elias or in simple words we call it a nickname but it should be valid means you should not have any special symbol or space between your allies right so import pandas as pd is done now in this pandas library in this pandas library i have three major data structures available one is series the second one is data frames the third one is panel okay so we have series data frames panel so these three are there now series data frames and panels what are they used for we call that series is a one dimensional data structure so in this the data is stored in a line just one line you call it horizontal or vertical anyhow but it's stored in one line that is one dimensional here the data is stored in the form of rows and columns in the tabular form so since i'm storing the data in the form of a table in the form of rows and columns we call it two dimensional and panel can be three four five any dimension so we call it multi dimensional but as a 12th class student you're not supposed to do this one in your syllabus you have just these two that is series and data frames so in our syllabus we will be doing that what is a series what is a data frame how will you create a series how will you create a data frame then what operations we can perform on them how can we store the data in them how can we fetch the data from them that all that everything we are going to study in this course right so first we will be starting with series and then we will be moving on to data frames but before you do any of these before you work with series or you work with data frames what you need to do is you have to install pandas so pandas needs to be installed for example this is my python idle if I try to write here, import pandas as PD, I make a program, so this code is already written, so I just add this line here, and it has to be in small letters. So import pandas as PD, right? Save this, and you want to run this code, so I write run. But I'm getting this error. It says no module named pandas. I don't have anything like pandas. There is no library called pandas. So in that case, you have to go to the command prompt. Where will you go? You will go to the command prompt, which looks like this. Right now, I have opened MySQL on my command prompt. But otherwise, you will open your normal command prompt. And on the command prompt, you have to line, write this line, which is pip install pandas. So pip pip install pandas pandas p small so pip install pandas and then press enter it will be installing pandas for you on your machine after that you will be able to use pandas right so if you are using python ideally you need to install pandas before you use that similar way if you are using this pycharm so if i'm using pycharm and i want to use pandas these all programs are using pandas already right but if you are making it for the first time you're going to click on pycharm click on preferences if you don't get the preferences options there will be a setting option here so click on preferences or settings and over here you will be getting project interpreter as you can see in the installed packages pandas is already installed right but if in yours it's not installed so you're going to click on this plus sign out here so click on this plus sign and from here type in your library which you want to use so you want to use pandas so it will show pandas and then click on install package it will be installed that is how you can do in pycharm but if you say that i don't want to use it in python ideally i don't want to use pycharm you don't want to install anything on your machine still you have an option if you don't want to install anything on your machine just open try.jupyter.org so when you open try.jupyter.org you get this click on the try classic notebook out of this this is your first option out here and after clicking on this you will be getting a screen like this here wait for a while sometimes there is a lot of traffic on this site and it gets stuck like this but as it gets fine you just have to create a new python notebook right now it's too much of crowd over there that's why it's not opening now so we can open new notebook and we can start typing here you don't have to install any pandas in this and fourth option is if you're doing on your phone 
then there is an app called PyDroid, P-Y-D-R-O-I-D, PyDroid, which can be installed on an Android phone or Android tablet, and then you can do your Python coding on that app as well, right? So any of these methods you can use for coding. And once you are ready with all this installation and everything, we will be starting the actual coding. So we will be starting with the actual coding then. In this class, I just wanted to introduce you that we must have pandas and what all we have in pandas that we will be working with. So we will be working with series and data frames. After that, we will be working on one more library that is matplotlib. So matplotlib.pyplot is used for making various graphs. Like you have this line graph, you have these bar graphs representing the data. So if you have to make these type of charts, that all comes under the matplotlib. So we will be doing that. And for all these, you first need to install the library. So go ahead, install that. In case you face any problem, write in the comments below. And in the next video, I will be starting with series. I will tell you how the series are created, what are series, how can we perform operation on series. Till then, you just need to revise a bit of your list. So try to revise that what do we mean by indexing and slicing on list. So this is your homework. In every class, you will be getting one small homework or worksheet. So today we haven't done much. We just had an introduction. So your work for today is you have to find out what is indexing or slicing in a list or to be specific. If you have this list with you, you have to tell me what will be printed if I print a two colon five and what will be printed if I print a 0 comma 5 comma 2 sorry not comma colon 2 so you have to tell me what will be the output of these two and yeah that is it so this will help you to revise your list and this will also help you to work with series ahead so in the next class every Tuesday Thursday Saturday you will be getting a video for IP on this channel around 4 to 5 4 to 5 p.m. in between you will be getting the upload and I'll see you on uh, Thursday now. Tomorrow we will be getting a video for computer science. I hope you liked it. If yes, do click the like button, share the video with all your classmates, batchmates and subscribe the channel in case you haven't subscribed yet. I'll see you on Thursday. Till then, take care, keep watching, keep learning.